Hello and welcome to the second video in this series of tutorials. In the last video, I showed you how to download Mathematica, what you can expect, and some basic mathematical calculations. I really hope they were useful. And if you liked it, please share or comment and just generally subscribe and just be awesome. So today I'm going to show you a very important concept in Mathematica called lists. Okay, now I already have Mathematica open right here. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and open yours. So let's begin. Lists are kind of similar to the concept of sets in number, in number theory or in mathematics. All that. They're, general, they're generally similar. They're like analogs for that in mathematical for them in math. So to begin let's type your first list. Let's see? Okay. Now just like you write out sets, they begin with the flower bracket, uh, the squiggly bracket. Type in let's see four, three, two. And there you go. There are your first set. Now ignore the fact that uh, it's showing input 14 right here. It's the first input of the worksheet, but it's not the first input that Mathematica has gotten all day, you know, using it previously. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, four, three, two. So, that's a list. So, you can have lists using numbers. You can have lists using words. Let's see. Apple mango and grape. You always remember to type in your lists with a squiggly bracket. Open it using a squiggly bracket and close it using a squiggly bracket. It's just like sets, how you do sets in like high school. And um, if you're going to type in words, use the double quotation mark. That's, you know, just two, two keys right of your L. Using QWERTY key. So here's another list. It consists of apple, mango, and oops, grapes. Sorry, and grapes. So all well and good. You type in the null set. That is the null set. Um, you can actually add two sets together. I'm not even talking about intersection or union. You can just literally add two sets together. For example, four. Three, two, plus one, two, three. So what we're trying to do here is Mathematica. What Mathematica is trying to do here is literally add these two sets together. Literally add. This is not union or intersection or what whatever you might have learned in set theory. This is literally addition. So okay, Mathematica can add words together. For example, apple, mango, grapes, right? That's a grape. And let's see, broccoli, onions, celery. So what you're going to get is Oh, okay, my bad. I typed in a plus instead of a comma. So, sorry, sorry, I, I, ignore that, ignore that. I, I should have typed in a uh, comma here, I typed in plus. Ah, there we go. So, you get apple plus broccoli, comma, mango plus onions, comma, celery plus grape, which is very good. Now, you might be wondering, what if we have word words plus numbers, right? So, okay, let me just uh, type in this set right here and this set. So, we have apple, uh, mango, 
And we have grip. Okay. We're trying to add it to this set, the set that contains the numbers 4, 3, and 2. 4, 3, 2. What's going to happen? It's going to happen what you would intuitively think would happen. Lists are very intuitive in math. I got Apple plus 4, Mega plus 3, Grips plus 2, right? Which is well and good. Now, if you have a background in programming, you might be thinking, oh, how did text and numbers, how, how, how does Mathematica add text to numbers? It does it the way it has been done. It's doing it like this. It's very intuitive. Mathematica generally does not differentiate between integer and double and care, like in C. It generally does not differentiate. It's just there to do math. Right? Now, what happens if we add two lists that are not the same length? Right? So we're trying to add this to to add this to four, five, six, seven, right? And boom, that's an error. So yeah, I mean e even though you might seem like you can do a lot with lists, you really can. You're limited by how lists should logically be added, right? Now, you can add the, the elements, the members of a list can be practically anything. So you can have a list within a list, right? You can have... Let's see. Mm, let's see. Mm, there we go. Now let's see. Sigma. And you can even literally insert So this is a list. This is a list that contains another list, a Greek character, and a screenshot that I previously had on my laptop. Sounds impressive? Yes. Now, list, remember, uh, like I showed you, lists can contain lists. So we take that one step further. What if I had a list that contained two lists, right? Now this is not really very special in and of itself. This is generally the way you should enter matrices. This is the general way to enter matrices. Now if you were to do this in your laptop or computer, whatever you're using, you would not get a matrix output. What you'd have to do is you'd have to go to Mathematica Preferences if you're on a Mac, and if you're on a Windows, it's probably going to be Edit Preferences, I'm not sure, somewhere there. So go to Preferences, go to Evaluation, Evaluation, and on the format type for new output cells, you're going to put in, it's generally going to be standard form, you're going to put in traditional form, right? In standard form, it's going to, if you type in a list that kind of sort of looks like it can be a matrix, it's going to output a matrix. But if you put in traditional form, and if you put in a list that could be a matrix that Mathematica can interpret as a matrix, it is going to be a matrix. Now, what I mean by that is this. Oh, before that. Notice how the first list within the list became the first row, and the second list within the list became the second row, right? And we could add another row, three, six, right? And it would be this um, three by two matrix. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Okay, now with that in mind, let me show you when this sort of breaks down, right? Two, three, four, five, six, right? Now, if you'll notice here that 
all the lists have the same length. That means all the rows have two columns in them, which is like a matrix. Now, the second row has three columns in it, but the first row has two columns in it. So Mathematica, instead of thinking, oh, this could be a matrix, it just outputs like this, which is just a plain list within a list and not very interesting. And finally, if you finally, if you want to just sort of multiply lists, what's going to happen is this. Let's see, we have a list three, four, right? And you multiply by two, sorry, two, one, right? There we go. What it does is it literally multiplies. This is not the dot product as some of you might think. This is just literally multiplying three times two and four times one. This isn't even multiplication over brackets where they would be distributed. No, this is not even that. This is just plain multiplication. And division, as you might have expected, goes like this. Now divide by two, one. So it's literally dividing these two. Four over, sorry, three over two and four over one. So that's how lists work. Now, the reason I'm teaching you this is that lists will come in very, very handy in the future. A solid understanding of how lists work, basically how lists work, will help you. As you're learning Mathematica and its functions, the list will show you. Uh, practically speaking, anything in Mathematica is a list. Practically speaking, any function that you type in is a list. You'll understand that when we go to the next video. Till then, bye bye, and thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe, and also share with your friends if you want to, you know, help them. You know, just just be an awesome person. Thank you.